everybody, it's Christy from Tales of the Ravenous Reader, and I'm here with Sarah Cook. I'm so excited. What's your name, right? It's cute. Cute. Close. All right. See? Close. Okay, I'm not close, but I want to say exactly. <laughs> I'm so excited to be here with you. And a little birdie yesterday told me, you haven't yet held a certain special box. I, I haven't. So I decided to bring it with me. I haven't opened mine yet. Oh. I picked it up yet. Yeah, so if you didn't know, Sarah has her very own fan mail box. Which, if you don't know what a fan mail box is, it's literally an ode to anybody who loves cons, fandoms, anything. This is my second fan mail box that I've gotten. The first one was Geekerella, which if you knew anything about that box, I was obsessed with it. Um, so yeah, when I went to my planner today, they're like, she hasn't actually seen the box in person yet. I'm like, I'm gonna bring it to her and have her unbox it. So do you want to share it with us? Sure, sure. It's gorgeous, by the way. Yeah, look that, at this. Oh, look at that. It's so pretty. It's look at the texture on know, this. It's really nice. It's, it's gorgeous. Made. It's yeah. gorgeous. Right, you want to tell us what's inside? Okay. Do you want me to open it? Yes. Okay. I haven't. I haven't seen it. Oh, so. I don't want to. You can open it. It's totally fine. What is it? Oh, there we go. I didn't want to like break damage the box. <laughs> Okay, so um, we have, uh, this is a, a tote bag. I've been seeing people carry those around the yeah. and giving them out, huh? So yeah, uh, this, um, it was a uh, penguin and dog made this, and the art is uh, by my friend Cena Grace. Wow. Um, he did uh, this little demonic cupcake art for a pin, which I think is also in here, um, that I gave out a lot last year, and so they used it on the bag, which is cool. It's really um, cool paint to match the new book. And from what I understand, the box is like full of your favorite people. Yes, yes. Right? I helped um, co-curate. So uh, then this is um, Jordan Dennett. Uh, she does a bunch of cool like neat girl t-shirts with different sayings. Like uh, there's one that says I rebel. Of course. There's one, there's one that says um, <laughs> Kylo Ren is a punk bitch, which is from that <laughs> SNL sketch. And um, yeah, she just has a bunch of great designs. So she did this little uh, sticker and button pack that has all of you know some buttons, some stickers, some temporary tattoos with um, a bunch of her t-shirt designs. Which is pretty cool. That's really fun. That's actually a really cool little thing. Yeah. And then the books. They did include the books, obviously. Uh, you get both of them. Uh, you also get these signed book plates and this letter from me. <laughs> which uh, they printed on pink paper, which is also very nice. Um, oh yes, here is the, the button with Cena's art also, very cute. Um, and then <laughs> these are um, pins from Giant Robot. There's a spam soupy and a soup dumpling, which are important sort of plot points in the book. So those are a lot of fun. Um, this is a uh, soap. What is that? Snow cut, uh, I think it's snow cut soaps. Oh my and gosh, look at yeah, that. Yeah, that is also a demon cupcake. <laughs> um, and it smells good, it's like strawberry chocolate or something. That's, That's amazing, super cute. I yeah. love that. Um, and then this, oh, and then uh, this is um, a print by uh, Jen Bartel, who's one of my favorite artists. And she has this series of um, Prints and pins uh, called Girl Gang. Um, yes. And so, like, female friendships are a big thing in the book, so we thought it'd be cool to include one of her Girl Gang prints. And then, this is the info card that just tells you kind of everything that you're getting um, and where it came from. And uh, it is on a poster of the Heroic Trio, which is an old school uh, Hong Kong action movie, which is also mentioned a bunch of times. So, it is such that's a cool what's in there, yeah. What a great home this year was. Yeah. So Heroin Complex came out last year mm -hmm. and Heroin Worship just came out? Yes. Just came out. Yep. Congrats. Thank I saw you. all your launch party photos from the Goddess, yes. right? It was so funny when I went there for Y'all West. I was like, I want to buy this book. And they were like, yeah, Sarah's here like every day except today. <laughs> yeah, one of my writing spots. Right? Oh, what the reset. Which couch do you sit on? The pink one. Of course. <laughs> of course you do. Um, so you write books and comics. Yes. Which I totally love. How does your process differ between the two different mediums? Um, you know, there's a lot of kind of idea exchange, I'd say, back and forth between both, because with comics, uh, obviously, 
you don't have to include quite so much uh, in your full description. I mean, you have to include some so the artist knows what it's supposed to look like. But we don't but see that. We don't see it. And part of the fun is sort of um, having a really collaborative relationship with the artist so that you can kind of exchange ideas back and forth. And I always enjoy seeing what the artist kind of brings to it. Um, whereas with prose, it's kind of all on you. You have to sort of make up everything. And you have to describe things in such a way that people can picture it because they're not going to have the benefit of beautiful art from someone who knows what they're doing. So, who designed the covers for the books? Uh, Jason Chan is the artist who did the covers for the books. He's amazing. He also did the art for um, Cindy Pond's latest book, Once. I can totally see that. Yeah, yeah. He's an amazing artist. Um, he really, like, I feel like conveys the tone of the books. He gets the characters. The characters look exactly how I picture them. And, you know, it was super important to me that they weren't whitewashed on the cover. And I love that they both look Asian and they also look like um, different kinds of Asian, which is also a challenge sometimes. Uh, but he just did an amazing job. That's really awesome. Can you talk about your inspiration behind writing this series? Yeah. There's one more I coming, mean, right? There's one more coming. Um, I mean, it kind of started out as just like, I am a big fan of superheroes. I'm a lifelong comic book reader. Um, I love urban fantasy, and I wanted to write a story that um, sort of dealt with kind of the contrast between the fantastical of those stories and then the more mundane things I wondered if like superheroes meant to deal with off screen or off page. Right. So um, I always wondered like, uh, who has to take in the dry cleaning like when their costumes get messed up during a big battle? Um, they don't have an Alfred, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, but you, you know, you don't see as much of like Alfred's exploits, I guess. So, uh, the first book, Heroin Complex, is about a girl who's a personal assistant to a superhero, and you know, that was just a fun premise that let me explore a lot of that. And then I sort of tried to maintain that through the next book and the next one, where there's all this crazy stuff going on, like demonic cupcakes and supernatural karaoke, but. Okay. But it's always rooted in, in like feelings because right. I, I love writing about superhero feelings. Um, so yeah, that's kind of right. Awesome. Can you give us any spoilers from book three? I know everybody asks this, right? And they're like, I'm, no. Well, I know. I can say that. Uh, so book one is uh, the main character is Evie Tanaka, who's the personal assistant, who of course. Spoiler alert, it's not really a spoiler because it's on the cover, but right. she has a superpower of her own. Uh, the second book is from the perspective of Beta Jupiter, aka Annie Chang, who is her former boss, lifelong best friend, and it, you know, both books kind of deal with their changing relationships. So uh, the third book is actually from the perspective of B, who is Evie's little sister. And in the first two books, she's a teenager, so we're going to take a little bit of a time jump so that she is, you know, in her early 20s, which is what Evie and Aveda are in their respective books. And um, she kind of has the power that is maybe the most villain adjacent. She, she can sort of project her feelings or her emotional state onto people, but she gets used in the wrong ways a little bit, like my control. Right. So uh, I wanted to explore what it's like when you sort of reach that point in your journey, if you have a superpower, where you have to choose what you're going to do with it. Because I think if you are a hero, you make that choice, right? Like, I, I really loved in the, the latest Wonder Woman movie, or I guess the only Wonder Woman movie right. you've ever gotten, uh, the amazing Wonder Woman movie, that um, Diana is someone who chooses to do good because it's the right thing to do. Like, it's pretty basic. But she still has to make that choice. You know, she could have just stayed hanging out on Paradise Island right? and not, not gone off to save the world. So I think that that is always an interesting dilemma with superheroes, and that's something I wanted to explore. That sounds fascinating. It's really cool. Is there any chance in the future that there might be comic side <laughs> stories or novellas? I mean, I would love that. Uh, one of the characters in the book um, is Lucy is the um, weapons expert, fight trainer, bodyguard, when they need bodyguards. Um, and she's uh, very good friends with Evie. She and Aveda are not as close, but they kind of like develop more of a connection in the second book. But 
she is like a really fun character because she's um, super girly. She loves like these like ruffly vintage dresses and you know she likes to have like really pretty hair and everything but she also is always carrying like seven different kinds of knives so you know I always like for that. yeah I, I always like sort of exploring those contrasts with female characters because I think we are all more than one thing so, right. you know, that's something I, I always like to look at so she actually is very probably the most requested character for her own kind of side story or novella or something so that's definitely something i would like to explore sounds really fun i'm totally up for a novella <laughs> please the novella for her. give us the whole world that'd be totally fine so if you haven't yet had a chance to check out sarah's fan mail box there are still some available there are yeah. stand here at the con or the website i believe there's still yep. some available or if you missed the chance or if you just want to get the books, the Red Bodies has signed copies yep. of your books. That's right. You can order them through the website. It's awesome. Or you can get them online as well. They're available on ebooks. So highly recommend and thank you for being here with thank me. Thank you.